Welcome, good evening. I'm Susan Ewing, the director of the Cranbrook Academy of Art. And tonight we have the great honor of hosting the internationally recognized sci-fi artist, filmmaker, inventor, and body architect, Lucy McRae. Through the generous support of the JRF Swanson Lecture Series. The JRF Swanson Lecture Series was established 35 years ago to attract architects, designers, artists, and scholars, all distinguished in the fields, and to honor the legacy of J. Robert F. Swanson. The Swanson family has quite a distinguished, excuse me, it's Friday, sorry, <laughs> has quite a distinguished history at Cranbrook, and I am thrilled to recognize Karen Swanson, who is with us this evening. Karen, will you please stand? Or, well, that's Karen by Aunt, there she Karen is the granddaughter of J. Robert F. Swanson, for whom this lecture series is named. Her father, Robert Swanson, is a life governor of the Cranbrook Academy of Art and the architect of DeSalle Auditorium, where we are tonight. Karen Swanson is the daughter of Robert and the great-granddaughter of Elio Saarinen. Yes, yes, it's, it's legacy, it's that legacy. <sighs> you can feel it. She is also an architect in the, in the, working in the area, and she is a current governor of the Academy of, of the Art Board. We are truly grateful to the Swanson family for their generosity over the years and for helping us to preserve the past and enhance the future with lectures like the one we're about to hear this evening. Now I'd like to welcome the Academy's architect in residence, Dr. Gretchen Wilkins, to introdu introduce tonight's Swanson guest lecturer. Gretchen, I turn the podium over to you. Thank you. Welcome, thank you. We have this energy from the day, it's incredible. We had such an amazing day, um, a full day workshop with our guest Lucy, um, who I'll introduce, but I, I just wanted to first echo um, Susan's comments about the Swanson lecture and welcome Karen Swanson with us, because it is such an incredible opportunity. We wouldn't be able to do things like this without that generous support. We can bring in these sorts of events and, and guests, um, and it just is so important to the culture of the program, so thank you again. Um, I just met, actually, I've known of Lucy for quite a long time. We share a bit of an orbit um, in far away in the other part of the globe in, in Melbourne, Australia, where I lived for some 10 years and where Lucy is from and practiced and um, studied also at, at RMIT, where I was. So, um, but we met for the first time in person today and it just felt like we had immediately known each other for, for quite a long time. And I think it's partly that that coming from that world, but it's also, I think, that she just immediately also kind of has never been here, but immediately feels like she's from here. <laughs> and that kind of DNA of Cranbrook, just questioning everything and, and inspi an inspired way of, of working. So we experienced that today with the workshop, um, and I just want to thank you for that, and thank the students for just jumping straight into this amazing uh, creative world that we set up in the in the architecture building today. Um, so. A little bit longer introduction for Lucy. Um, she, as, as Susan mentioned, um, has a very interdisciplinary practice across sci-fi art, filmmaking, inventing, and a body architect. Her work speculates on the future of human existence by exploring the limits of the body, beauty, biotechnology, and the self. She works across installation, film, photography, artificial intelligence, and edible technology. She is regarded as a thought leader who is exploring the cultural and emotional impacts science and cutting edge technology have on redesigning the body. Lucy uses art as a mechanism to signal and provoke our ideologies and ethics about who we are and where we are headed. She is regarded as a pioneer who blurs the boundaries across art, architecture, design, and technology with a healthy disregard for labels that limit interdisciplinary practice. And that's what we really experienced today, I think, in, in an amazing way. She has had numerous exhibitions across the world and at very prestigious venues, most recently at a solo show at the National Gallery of Victoria in Australia. She more recently established her practice in Los Angeles, where she came from um, just to see us, and is a visiting professor at SciArc in LA. So please join me in welcoming Lucy McRae. Wow. Thank you, Susan, Gretchen, Karen. Thanks all for spending your Friday evening here. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to get my head around 
this place. It's, it's an anomaly. It's, it's insane. <laughs> and I love it and I feel very at home here. So I'm really, um, I'm really happy to um, have been spending a wonderful, electric, explosive, creative day with um, some very, very talented students. So when I was a little kid, maybe seven or eight, I couldn't sleep at night and I, I struggled because I, I was like, how did we get here? And what are we all meant to be doing here? It was a real sort of, as a seven-year-old, existential crisis. And I just wanted to know, you know, what was my purpose? And I think that we all share as sentient beings this wish to understand what are we doing, why are we here, and what's our purpose? Um, and, and as a memory at school, I remember um, that I was always trying to fit in and was trying to seek the approval of, of my peers. And actually, when I was doing classical ballet, I did uh, French classical ballet for 14 years, I felt way more human when I was at the ballet bar than when I was at school. And these formative years of feeling uncomfortable at high school set the tone for how my practice is now. And today, we, we learnt that coming from this place of unknown and not knowing where we are going is really how I create my work. And it means not relying on other people's approval and really allowing that place of, of uncomfortability to, to drive the work. And so what I'm interested in, as Gretchen said, is really pushing the, the human biological limits and to the point of asking the question, who are we and where are we headed? And as an artist, you make work from really subtle feelings. And they're, they're very quiet, they're very abstract. Sometimes they look like this, where Harry the Hoover is sucking the air out of some weird membrane that you're making. Um, and so the process is really intuitive. Um, and it's about listening to these subtle feelings and it, it's all about this, this discovery. And it means acting from a place of instinct. And instinct is not something that is learned. It's this innate um, human wired trait. And it's something that you were born with. Um, and you can't learn instinct. It's, it's something that you can listen to and act upon. So in this spirit of intuition and instinct, we hop to right now, in 2019, scientists have invented a godlike technology that is questioning how we are born and what we are born with. Is, is everyone aware of CRISPR technology? We talked about it a little, I think everyone's nodding. Maybe for a few people who don't know, because I, I love banging on about it, if you think of a, a molecular pair of scissors, that allows you to cut out faulty DNA and replace it with something that is perfect. And this genetic engineering technology gives us the real potential to design the body from scratch. So we can design strong, superior, humans void of imperfection. And messing with biology has tremendous scope to go horribly wrong. The decisions that we make today are permanent and we can't go back. So here we see a, a double muscled cow, which is beautiful. The coat is, is extraordinary. Um, but depending upon where our ethics and moral compass are and knowing that we have this technology to actually make these kinds of hybrid creatures, humans, animals, then this should disturb you. We, we need to be concerned. CRISPR is, is more game-changing than electricity. It's, it's wild. And so, sorry, I should have asked if anyone is vegetarian. It can be a little bit disturbing. Um, this is from the Philadelphia Children's Hospital. Um, I think it was 2017, where they bought four premature lambs to term. They're calling it an elaborate bio bag. Um, so this suggests and shows us that no longer we are born, but we are grown. Um, and to the extent where science is performing the duties of the womb. And is it okay to edit the embryo of an unborn child and make it a superior being? You know, we have this control and how we respond to it 
um, will determine how we evolve. And, and I, we also talked today about how art design, architecture, the creative industry is so critical right now in this sort of extreme rate of science and technology. And, and this kind of cl climate is forcing us to act in ways that we wouldn't normally act. It's making us ask questions that we haven't thought about before, um, and it's really rubbing up against our primal instincts. And so I believe that no matter who you are or um, where you're coming from, we need to move forward through this really different place of instinct and intuition, which I think Cranbrook is an incredible example of this happening from the ground up. It's, it's really obvious. Um, and so, as I said, as an artist, I sense things that are on the periphery, things that we know little about. I call these weak signals and these kind of like vibrations of the cultural fringes around us. And by doing that, I speculate on the future of the body and I build worlds. And these worlds happen object by object that, that contemplate what kind of world that we want. And so I've got a, a bit of a philosophy um, in my studio, and that is to ask impossible questions. So if it's a question that has a seemingly obvious answer, we're not interested in it. Um, our purpose is to disrupt, to swim upstream, and whenever we start something, we have no idea what it's going to look like at the end. And that means that everybody working with us, whether it's clients, the studio, collaborators, fabricators, it's a general shared vision and value of believing that through risk we innovate. 